Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my review of Tokyo, The Last War, a Japanese fantasy drama horror film from 1989. The year is 1945. After the horrific firebombings of the Pacific War levels Japan to the ground, the government decides to consult spiritual psychics to aid them in winning the war. Unfortunately, the resentment and agony of the souls of the firebombing victims culminate together to revive the evil onmyoji, Yasunori Kato. Only a young, psychically imbued apprentice of the priests will dare to fight against the evil magic user. However, can this lone man possibly contend with Kato's overwhelming power? So Tokyo The Last War is actually a sequel to the movie Tokyo The Last Megalopolis from 1988, which was directed by Akio Jisoji. Now, this installment, the sequel, was directed by Takashige Ichisei. Now, if that name sounds familiar to you, that's because he's probably the most successful producer of Japanese horror films from the last quarter century. He's the man who produced the, the uh, Ring films, the Juon films, the J-Horror theater films, some of Koji Shiraishi's movies, including Noroi the Curse, and many more. So the interesting thing is that Ichisei has only directed one theatrical film, Tokyo The Last War. So this movie is kind of intriguing for that reason alone. You know, how does this guy do as a director? Well, I think he does a pretty good job. You know, it's shot well, gets some good performances from, his, from the cast, He's less concerned with the fantastical superstitions of the prior film and more concerned on providing a horror movie experience. And that's not surprising looking back on his producing career. There is still some fantastical stuff in this, but it feels a little different from its predecessor. Another fascinating tidbit is that one of the assistant directors is Nagai Choi Lam, the director of Ricky O, the story of Ricky. So that, that surprised me when I saw this in the, uh, in the credits because I do not feel his influence that much in the film. Uh, if you've seen a lot of his other films and you go into this knowing that he was one of like the assistant directors, you might expect more insanity, you know, more looniness. You don't get a lot of that in this. He's listed on IMDb as the general director, which is a, such an ambiguous title. I have no idea what this guy was doing. You know, he's not listed as action director or anything like that. My guess is that maybe he helped out on the attack scenes involving the villain. We'll get to those in a few minutes. Now, one positive of this film is that Masaya Kato plays our lead protagonist. And I've been a huge fan of this guy for years. He has a lot of screen presence. I've noted this multiple times on my channel before. Uh, you may have noticed him in the Takashi Miike film, Agitator, the Ryuhei Kitamura film, Aragami, the horror film, Last Supper, the martial arts movie from Korea called Fighter in the Wind, or the Mark Dacascos film, Drive. So he's been around, and he's kind of uh, collaborated with multiple industries in multiple countries. Now, in Tokyo The Last War, his character has telekinetic, uh, telekinetic powers, apparently caused by experiments that were inflicted upon him when he was a child. But he also has side effects and weakens after using his power, so he's automatically outmatched and outpowered by the villain Yasunori Kato in this movie, which kind of places our protagonist squarely as an underdog. And speaking of Yasunori Kato, uh, Kyusaku Shimada returns as the evil villain who actually inspired the character M. Bison from the Street Fighter video game. So, that's pretty cool. You know, interesting to observe how this villain, uh, who was created from an original series of novels, made such an impact on popular culture. Then we get the lead actress, Kaho Minami, who previously starred in the Sogo Ishii film Angel Dust, and her character has a connection to the villain that's developed throughout the film. And finally, we have veteran actor Tatsuro Tanba, who has a supporting role. Now, I mentioned previously that the, the director is most well-known for his horror productions, and there are some pretty cool, horrific imagery in this film. 
There's a creepy scene early on involving a little girl who's getting her hair pulled. It's not that violent, but it's kind of uncomfortable to watch. And near the midpoint, we get some surprisingly bloody death scenes. There's a really freaky and shocking scene in a hospital later on that includes what is probably the most memorable shot of the entire film. It has some pretty awesome body horror imagery to it. If you're not shocked by that scene, I don't know what to tell you, because it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, the wire work for the villains flying is pretty good too. So these are the kind of scenes that I suspect that Nagai Choi Lam helped with, but I have no idea. Now one thing to keep in mind, pacing it's on the slower side. This isn't like an all-out action film or anything like that. The story covers less ground than the original film, at least in terms of historical time periods. Because remember, the original film had like multiple sections set in multiple different time periods. This one takes place within a, a rather short uh, time period. It does drag maybe a little in spots, but the continued infusion of horror into World War II era history kind of makes this franchise memorable and unique. Maybe not quite as good as its predecessor, but it's worth watching if you enjoy Tokyo The Last Megalopolis. And remember, there's also an animated film called Doomed Megalopolis that's also worth checking out. So, Tokyo The Last War, currently available on YouTube with English subtitles. Hopefully someone in the United States releases this on Blu-ray at some point in the future. So check it out if it seems interesting to you. And as always... I will see you next time.